Whether it's an attack or a meeting, there are acute and obtuse angles. Acute angles are for defence and dodging, obtuse angles for strikes. The same goes for getting free. There are also acute and obtuse angles there. An acute angle is insufficient for leverage and an obtuse angle gives you a basis of 90 grades to lean against. If it's acute, a hand will glide. These have the similarities. I'll illustrate it using the stick. Let it be where I grip the object and this is the arm. Later I'll switch to people. To get free from this hold, you have to, in this case, twist the object out quite roughly. It's possible if there's an axis. If there is, a long solid object, a lever, can rotate around the point as leverage. If there is no such point, then the leverage is useless. It is just floating in the air, impossible to lean on and use in any way. Come here. Let us switch to the arm. Now as we switch to the arm, instead of the stick, I had that time I hold his arm. What are the similarities? The main similarity is the bone, a long solid object resembling a stick. However, here we have joints able to bend, links, the mass of my body. I'm a living system as opposed to a stick. Let us, what I can or can't do. I can do practically the same with the help of my thumb, creating an axis and pull here. The load here on the thumb of my hand will be rather high. Where is the weak spot at? Where is the break in the link? In between the thumbs, the middle and index fingers. These are the most vulnerable. If you're determined, you can direct the vector of the force there. You can rotate it as well as distribute forces. Try to understand, first of all, do not go up or down. You can come closer or step away. Sit down, that is work with your legs. You create a fulcrum here. Create it artificially and think whether you have to make a fist, rotate it or lower the elbow and twist the hand directly into a force. The vector of force to the fingers. Not to the thumb, as it is the strongest link. If I push in its direction, it will hinder me. It will be a hindrance. These links are weak. When Alexei Alexeyevich showed it on you, you felt twist. It's not about wriggling out, just if you're unsure, start rotating. An object that is moving, rotating, is harder to grip, and it is hard to hit a moving object. Look here. It's a drive shaft. Let us see what happens if you clasp it. Got it? What happened? It's not moving. At first it was rotating all right, but now it's stuck. That is all about the leverage, the critical point, the longer lever. Therefore that will be in the place of destruction. That is why we consider it structure, where it will break and be destroyed. The weak spot that you take advantage of will be defeated with. Let's continue. He holds me. What do I do? If I try lowering my arm, there is a limit to it. The body is a hindrance. The leg must be bent, not straight. You have to sit down or half bend the knees. The hip has the work. What do we have? Now the stick represents the arm of the opponent. Now we have to push on the elbow with the weight. Whose weight? Your own. Your body. To make it work, I have to use the point. 
If you sit down, your weight will work for you. You won't just twist things with your muscular force. You have to continue the muscular force with the weight of your body. The main thing is to create a lever by sitting down. However, there is a but, lots of buts. Questions and answers, as always during the first step of any cognition. How to sit. How to do this and that. What if we do like this? There shouldn't be these questions yet, as it's too early for them. We're still explaining the schemes, the vision, the perception, and the implementation of a, the whole maneuver, including attack, counterattack, defense and all. Do I say straight or relaxed? As Alexei Alexeyevich was explaining, there was no questions. It is right, no questions are to emerge at this stage. What are the steps of the maneuver? How to trigger the mechanism? It was illustrated by the crank gear. The drive off shows how these links work. Getting free from a hold. The arm should be pulled towards you or pushed away. It all depends on the situation and the condition of the hold between these two objects. There is a contact. What is it? We either lower or heighten the pressure. If the situation demands that I pull my hand closer, the contact is preserved. Same will be if you push it away. I preserve it or try to do so. It's impossible to set rigid rules as the situation is flexible. So it must be the rules. Mostly, however, we have to preserve the contact in order to preserve the feeling of his body. If you feel it, you feel the force and the center of mass. Feeling the center of mass, you can control him. That is why in getting free from a hold, not only quality is important, but also the emotional and physical state. See through the contact of hands. The position of the arm can be changed, sideways, down. The shape of the hand doesn't matter, though some people try to make it like this, or make it straight. It doesn't matter, actually, only the presence forming in the point of the hold. Hands differ. They can be strong and stout and the opposite. The force that we exert on the floor equals the force it exerts on us. The same here. The force he exerts equals the force that your hand exerts. Otherwise your tissue will be damaged. That is why it is tense. doesn't mean your whole body is in tension. There is a kind of secret, a zest. You can preserve the tension in one point, but everything else to be relaxed. Tense there, relaxed everywhere. Apart from being physically relaxed, you have to be relaxed mentally. Your mental state has to be not spasmodic, not cramped. It is possible to be physically relaxed, but mentally cramped, and that will spoil everything. The whole slum, everywhere, is not good too. You have to move. When you're performing the maneuvers, you have to mind whether he starts to move. You can slide, shift, redirect to other parts of your body, or other parts relocate. Alexei Alexeyevich said to you to get a partner and to work. It is not about getting free, getting free like this or like this. What's your objective? Regardless of the lever of your abilities, the seminar is for everybody. The newbies look and try to understand, and the experienced ones can see something new in it, as they mostly work with the form without getting deep into the sense of it. When you stand like this, you try to feel how stable the person is, his attitude to you and the psychological state. 
you join them and then sit down on the one leg and shift like this. That is the work of your center of mass. As in a seesaw, one part down and the other one up and vice versa then. The hips are both the center and the weight. That permanently gives you the ability to initiate actions, to swing. The only thing to avoid is the exaggerated swinging. It is okay during the training, as we are all different and understand differently. Sometimes, in order for you to see what I do, I need to exaggerate. However, I'm not a seesaw and have more than one link, but 256 degrees, right? 254. 254 degrees of freedom are compared to liquid, water. It means you are very mobile and you have to feel the movements of your mobile masses. When you shift your weight, you can feel how stable you are. You won't stand on toes and bend backward, not to topple over your mass. Standing like this, I can feel whether it's comfortable for me to stand on my toes or the whole sole. Whether it is better to shift faster or to make it an impulse in the end. When you do it, from the outside, it may seem strange, but from the inside you know what the second step will be. There will be a continuation of your action. You know what you have to do after the maneuver. You have to imagine it in your mind. Was it from this side? When Alexei Alexeyevich showed the stabbing, there was the stopping. You have to avoid this stopping, not only physically, but inside your mind, physically and mentally, so to say, in combination. I stab him, and once again, there was a stopping in the final point. It wasn't explicit, but everyone has it. Poke, and that's it. Then you can do anything to this guy. He has used all his emotional charge, as well as the physical, and he's done. Tried his best, but done. There are no next steps, no development of the situation. It's not about how he meets the attack. That's it. You've done it, and many people do this. It's his turn now. It's not necessary to mind the speed, actually. You can see it by the person as he meets the attack. There it goes, and halfway he clasps inside. He wants to counterattack, but can't make his wish into the physical form. The reason why we tell you to do it slowly is for your mind to outpace your physical actions and metaphorically rush to and fro over a thousand times. Find the optimal solution, rate, type, element, a pile of variations. Then you make the right decision as you think it. Attack. I, I consider what the next step will be. It's not that simple, as it looks from this side. Not simple at all. When you accumulate the experience and get new skills, you can consider possible speedy movements, whether you're able to do them. That is where self-estimation is necessary. Are you able or unable to perform? Attack. The most appropriate would be to rotate the stick. The same applies for getting free. Why some people can't stand, can't understand the sameness sometimes? It's sameness allegedly, but not actually. We start walking as toddlers and continue as the elderly until we die. 
Each time the steps differ. However, we are not bored by walking or running. If you care about your health, you will add some difficulties to overcome. Hurdles, loads, this and that. Higher, stronger to the exercises. Same here. However, in relation to the element, to you, everything changes, especially the perception of life on the whole and other elements and nuances of it. I have to think. If I hadn't felt a thing before, now I start to feel and see something. I shifted the hand and could feel his eyes, now through this point. Thanks to this point of contact, you can perceive his weak points and feel the centers of his system. As soon as the ankle changes, something vanishes. I have to pull him over here, because in order to get to his head again, I have to shift abruptly, not what abruptly in this case, and hit his arm in order to injure his throat. With what? Huh? You got to his neck. When you work together in pairs, you are, according to Alexei Alexeyevich, a psychobiomechanical system. It's not just training, but a work with a person. Getting to know his mental and physical traits, and not just come here, training and using a maneuver.